On this episode of Blending Bourbon, Dixon and I have the first of our two-part series conversation with Jonathan Crocker from Frank August. Blending Bourbon is the podcast that takes you beyond the barrel and behind the scenes of the whiskey industry with master blenders Dixon Dedman and David Mark Young. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Blending Bourbon. I'm Dixon Dedman, 2XO Whiskey. Joined as always by the second most fashionable person in the bourbon industry, uh, the owner and master blender of Golden Sheaf, Mr. David Mark Young, and my uh, podcast coach, who's trying to get me to quit sounding like such a dumbass, has said that you got to start jumping straight into the episode and no more of this kind of fluff uh, nonsense. So I would like to introduce our guest today, the <laughs> first most fashionable person in the bourbon industry. There it is. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Crocker, owner, founder, master blender, um, and a very good friend of mine from the left coast. Uh, he is responsible for this amazing brand called Frank August um, and has lost a bet and now has to join us on this podcast today. Hello, Jonathan. <laughs> Hello, David. Welcome, everyone. Hello. Thank hey, you for hey, having hey. me, guys. Yeah, Jonathan, thanks for joining us. This is awesome. This is highly anticipated, so we're so happy this worked out for everyone. Me as well. We were just talking about it. I think it began in July, trying to get this thing on the book, so we finally made it happen. Yeah, a lot of moving parts, um, but we did. Yeah, we made it here, and I agree, hundred percent. I'm happy to to stick back seat, be second to the 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 number one most fashionable <laughs> <laughs> in the industry. I, I took it easy on you today, David. You did, yeah. I was I was up all night worried about it, but uh, yeah, so we made it. So I, I think I, I like. Jonathan and I have some history, much like uh, it's, it's, this is it very interesting because it's, it's a very similar history um, that, that you and I have, David. And, um, you know, I, I, I want to say, you know, right out of the gate how I, I just I think in uh, when I was kind of starting with no idea what I was doing, um, there were several people who at least listened, uh, at least offered advice, uh, at least pointed me in, in a few directions. Um, and one of the things that I take uh, from, from a lot of the time that I spend traveling and talking to people is, is they're uh, kind of shocked at times to find out, um, you know, how, uh, how tight this industry is and how, um, you know, for all intents and purposes, uh, you know, everybody kind of looks out for everybody and everybody tries yeah, for to sure. help, help everybody out. And, you yeah. know, I, I, I think I, one of the things that I get, and I'm not acting like I've done anything, but one of the things that I, I get is, um, is when you see somebody who is, in a place where you were, uh, is, is going, you know, is, is trying to accomplish, you know, and, and you, you, you have something, um, you know, may not be a lot. Sometimes it's just to listen. Sometimes it's just to be a sounding board. Sometimes it's to say, Hey, I know a guy or sometimes whatever, but it, it's, it, it is really rewarding. I think to, to see people that you've come to know and, and hopefully helped in one way or another, um, you know, find success and really do some awesome stuff. And, and I think, uh, for me, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't know that I've ever helped either of you, but I've enjoyed watching both your, um, kind of journeys and, and being a part of, um, you know, or, or watching on the sidelines, the things that y'all have accomplished. And, and I think, for both of you, what, what you've both done with your brands, um, is, is really, is really remarkable. And I, I'm, I'm proud of both of you for, for what you've done. And, and, um, you know, it's, it's just been, been cool. This is cool to get 
um, you know, to get you all together. Cause I think you have, there's a lot of similarities, um, for, for both, you know, for what you guys have, have done. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I know. Think, I you appreciate know, that. Go oh, ahead, go ahead David. David. No, 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 go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, um, Dixon and I, and I'm not sure David, if, um, you have a relationship as well, but we share a friend in Drew Colesveen and, Drew had very early on said to me, and I think I shared this with you, Dixon, you know, that Drew had shared that you're going to be surprised by how many people are going to support you and help you along this process. And genuinely, I I thought it was just a a nice passing comment that he was making about the industry that he was in. But the one thing that I've realized in these last you know, long, short, three and a half years of is just how true of a statement that was. And Dixon was, you know, uh, sincerely one of the very first people that I had the privilege to meet, get to know and develop a relationship with and someone that I, you know, sincerely call a friend now three and a half years later. So it is, it is an amazing industry. It's a part of the industry whose story that I think needs to be told more. You know, it's not just those extreme examples of the Heaven Hill fire and how the industry rallied alongside, um, you know, a brand like that. But it's the everyday kind of small, inconsequential decisions or small brands like ourselves that are coming up that some of these amazing people in the industry coming alongside of you and, you know, offering all of their experience, insight and support. It just it doesn't happen in any other industry. Typically in most industries in order for your brand or for you to be successful, that means your competition needs to fail at some point. And, you know, I'm not suggesting that there's no competition in in our industry, but there really is this idea, this philosophy that a rising tide raises all boats. And it's something that, you know, I take a lot of pride being a part of in some very small capacity now. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, And, you know, extremely grateful for, Dixon all, you know, on a, on an ongoing basis. Um, and, and it continues to perpetuate. And so, you know, I find myself in a position where I'm, um, asked a lot of questions and, um, always willing to, you know, pay it forward and, and reciprocate what I've received in the industry. So, you know, Dixon give you a lot of credit. It started with you, at least for me. Um, and so, you know, People ask questions all the time. And if I can't answer the question, I'm always, you know, sharing your phone number and, and writing it in random <laughs> bathroom stalls just to uh, spread the good, the good word, the good wealth. <laughs> well, you know, my goal was to fish for some compliments and I think I accomplished <laughs> that. So that was, that was great. Um, it was good. It was good. good. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, um, Jonathan, like straight 30,000 foot elevator pitch, um, you know, you, you know, I, I know that you're, you're present in, in, in a dozen markets or whatever, but, but if, if you got somebody who, you know, you, you're, you come across and they say, Hey, tell me, tell me, you know, tell me about what you got going on. Tell me about, sure, tell me sure. about your brand. The, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the elevator pitch is the name represents the story that we want to tell in bourbon. So Frank is inspired by one of my business partners, late father, Frank Tatella, and August is inspired by my other business partner's son's middle name, Nils, or I'm sorry, my other business partner's son, Nils, middle name, August. So Frank representing our past, understanding our heritage, our history, where we've come from, where we've been, and August representing all our future ideals, aspirations, and just the idea of looking forward, because as we all know very well, Traditionally, the story of bourbon has been told by its past. It's told by looking back and looking back only. So we want to pay our respects, but at the same time, look forward. So from a kind of philosophy standpoint and ethos, that's what Frank August is meant to represent. You know, we believe that there is a more expansive story of bourbon to still tell, one that will be told by all of us. And again, traditionally speaking, it really has been restricted to that legacy origin story. Some grandpappy's family recipe passed on from generation to generation, a distillery that's been revitalized after a hundred years, a yeast strain that's been brought back. This is the name of the mule that pulled these barrels from these rick houses all these years ago, so on and so forth. And as we, I think we would all agree, we're not saying anything disparaging against those stories. Some of us might've built 
and sold successfully a brand based on some of those stories. Um, but what's happened is that it's kind of homogenized the category of bourbon as a whole, right? Walk into your favorite bottle shop, close your eyes, randomly reach out for two bottles, pull them in front of you. And chances are it's the same story, just repackaged, repurposed, regurgitated another way. So for us, we felt like there was a huge opportunity. Um, you know, I hate to use the word white space in business, but you know, that proverbial white space, that's what we saw. And as cluttered and competitive as the category of bourbon is, there was really no modern expression of what bourbon is. And by that, you know, we wanted the, the liquid itself to be the heritage and story. So that's why our bourbons, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey and from one of the best distilleries that we could possibly work with. But beyond that, we wanted every other touch point, every other expression of the brand to look, behave, operate, feel different than what you'd come to expect with bourbon. So hence the very kind of minimal bottle design, the aesthetic, you know, we believe in the idea that less is more, where I think the industry subscribes to the opposite, that more is more, uh, you know, from a packaging and bottle design standpoint, everything is very ornate, very decorative, lots of script typography, throw an animal on for good measure, a buffalo, chicken, cock, horse, turkey, use the word old, and you've got yourself a bourbon brand. And again, not saying anything negative about that, but we felt that there really wasn't anything for Can I, um, I someone that was looking for something second. different. I just yeah. have to point this out, David. He Chicken cock is a brand. He wasn't saying put a chicken or that. That, that, was, that was one word. Um, for that clarification. You, your eyes lit up, and I, he, it, that's that's one word. Just I just wanted. To I was I thing. thought it was cute the concept of an animal. I agree. You put a you put a big bison on there, and it, yeah. No, I, it's I, gonna I, sell. I Absolutely, yeah. I do appreciate the context, though, Dixon. Yeah, thanks. No, I, I just yeah. know that sometimes that's one of your safe words, and and I was afraid. <laughs> you, I just... This is where we decline, Jonathan. Apologies. <laughs> no, no. But yeah, you know, I think you know when we look at what's the statistic now. I think we're going on about fifteen years of year over year double digit growth within our industry. And when you look at that, it only points to one thing and that's a customer. And to suggest that customer is the same customer that it was 15 years ago as it is today is just completely wrong, right? It's foolish. Um, and it forced us to really kind of look a little deeper on who is that customer today? You know, is it still just that older white gentleman? And of course, that's a very, you know, uh, primary customer within our industry. But there's more diversity in this category than there's ever been. Diversity in age, younger than ever. Diversity in sex, more women are drinking it. Diversity in ethnicity, people of color are flocking to the spirit. So when you realize that, to me, it demands the question, what brands are speaking to this new consumer? And how are they engaging them and speaking to them in a meaningful way? So that's what we've kind of endeavored to do in building Frank August of trying to create a conversation and tell a story that is just as authentic as one of these legacy origin stories, um, but appeals to, yes, a new customer as well as the existing customer in our space. Yeah, I love that. I love that, you know, looking forward, because um, it is, it's such, such a traditional market, um, but when you look at it now, it's, you know, especially on online, I mean, that's, that's one big, you know, difference between 15 years ago and today, um, the virtual whiskey enthusiast. And, um, despite some of the shenanigans that, you know, conversations that happen around taters and, and whatnot, you know, it's still a completely <laughs> different demographic and it's really interesting to to you know it's broad and wide and uh you know younger folks are getting to it you, you know you, you listed off all of the um the change to the the consumer and so that's interesting to to um you know i'd love to have been a fly on the wall or or, or to you know hear some of the conversations as you've developed your marketing strategy and develop that persona of your uh you know target consumer because yeah, absolutely. That's that's a great lens. I love that, and you know, and the the concept behind it. That's love it even more. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up on that. Is one of the things I wanted to to talk to to bring up to to YouTube because 
one of the, I, what I find um, about both your brands that I think is is exciting, is intriguing, and is um, and, and but you know what's funny is you're you're almost your brands are almost the exact opposite um, in the sense that with Frank you have this very modern look feel. It's very um, it's 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 non-traditional uh it's sleek it's elegant it's beautiful and but then you you do a lot in your marketing about very traditional american americana music art architecture Mm -hmm. uh, craftsmanship and so you know you've got this balance of both kind of we're pushing this category forward and and, and doing something totally different while also, you know, kind of using these like foundational elements of, of American culture as part of your story, which I think is, is, is fascinating and, and incorporating elements like fashion and, and art into your, you know, in, into what you're doing is, you know, you kind of got this, this crossover thing going and, and, and then on the, the opposite end of the spectrum or not necessarily the opposite end of the spectrum, but if you flip those two things, you've got this, this historic pre-prohibition era uh, brand in Golden Sheaf that has this fabulous, um, you know, history that dates back, you know, 150 plus years. Um, but to reinvigorate that brand, you've taken a very modern approach to, um, you know, the liquid you present as opposed to saying this is Golden Sheaf. It's our 90 proof, whatever it's, it's all about blending. It's, it's every release is unique. Every release is, you know, it, it reminds me of another brand I heard of several years ago, but it's, you know, it's this, this idea that, that like, you know, it's, it's not the traditional. Is there an animal just, they part of the name? Um, please don't. I told you it's a safe word. We don't want to go there. Eviary base perhaps. But you know, the idea that like you've, you've taken this heritage concept, but built the liquid strategy on, on a very new and innovative program that, that you didn't see, you know, 20 years ago or whatever. So, um, you know, I think, I think to reach all these demographics, we have to, you know, you can't just, um, wash, rinse, repeat what worked right. 30, 40 years ago. Um, and, and, and that has to be done. It's as much about your your branding and your and your and your marketing and your positioning as it is about um, you know liquid strategy and and how you want to um, you know get your you know what what products you want to bring to market. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, we've it, talked about, about that. Oh, go ahead, Mark. David, sorry. Uh, um, well, I was just going to say, yeah, it's it's not a you know a tailgate uh, shooter, right? It's it's. Um, it's, it's not an everyday, everywhere, every liquor store, every shelf, every home product. Um, but, uh, I, I think that's great because I, one major change, um, that I've, uh, you know, that, that, that's really prevalent now is that is it's a culture, right? It's it, whiskey is an experience. It's, it's not just you buy it and it disappears in your home. You know, people celebrate it, they share it. They, you know, business deals are, are done sharing whiskey. Uh, it's, it's a part of, um, a lifestyle, you know, celebrating things. Um, so it's that, that, that's, you have to look at it through that lens. Otherwise it's, it, it is the rinse and repeat every day, um, product. And, you know, there's, there's not really a lot of meaning to it other than serves a purpose. Absolutely. I feel like it, within the industry, um, product, service, goods industry, you know, the catchphrase word for, you know, a long time has been experience. And if you really start to unpack that, to me, that's what's fascinating and interesting about building a brand, telling a story. And I remember one of the first times that I connected with Fred Minnick, and I was walking him through the whole concept, and this was three years ago, and about kind of halfway in between, he kind of stopped me and said, Jonathan, you know, I love the branding. I love the idea. I love the story. I love the design, but my fans, all they care about is what's in that bottle. That's all they care Mm -hmm. about. And it was, you know, again, this was three years ago. 
brand hadn't even come to market yet. And I was thinking, you know, do I disagree with Fred Minnick or do I just kind of like go? And, you know, I took the opportunity to say that I respectfully disagreed. And, you know, there's zero inside that bottle, whether it's mine or your guy's bottle or whoever is a, what's of most paramount importance. There's nobody that's questioning that. But to suggest that there's other factors that contribute to that experience, to me, I just, I just don't believe. You know, if we went to a meal together, restaurant, nobody's going to question what's the most important thing. Was the meal good, right? Was, it, was the food good? But from the moment you arrive, the way that the restaurant looks to the moment that you walk in, the way that you're greeted, the service that you provided, the ambiance, the quality of service, all of those factors contributes to your experience of that meal, right? And to me, it's no different um, than in our industry. Of course, the most important thing is the quality of that whiskey, without question. But to me, every other touch point and experience that someone comes up against and experiences with Frank August contributes to their experience of Frank August. So the marketing, the branding, the storytelling, the packaging, all of that, I think I would even say impacts the way that that whiskey tastes, you know? So we've been, you know, really committed to being uh, focused on both, you know, with, uh, again, I feel like a broken record here, but there's zero question. We're fanatical about the quality of our whiskey, full stop. There, there's no compromise there, but we've, approach to every other aspect of the brand as well and you know that for us the other side of that coin if you will is the branding the marketing and the storytelling because we we do believe that's such an important part of how you tell your story and introduce a brand how how can you possibly break through the clear uh, uh, that is the bourbon industry the hundreds if not thousands of other brands and the tens of millions hundreds of millions of dollars that are spent in advertising how can a brand like any of ours cut through that if we don't commit to that right 